Hello everyone, welcome to TIC. This is Khushal and today we will be looking at this question product of array except self. So let's see what the question has to say. Given an array norms of n integers, written an array output such that output of i is equal to the product of all the elements of norms except the norm of i. Let's simplify this. So if the given input array is 1, 2, 3, 4, the output array will be 24, 12, 8 and 6. Now, how did 24 come at the first place? So 24 is the product of 2, 3 and 4. All the elements of the array except 1. Similarly, 12 is the product of all the elements except 2. 8 is the product of all the elements except 3. And 6 is the product of all the elements except 4. Okay, so the first thought that comes to my mind is for each and every element, we need to traverse and multiply all the other elements. But that would take O of n square time, right? That would make that solution a brute force approach. Let's see how we plan on optimizing that approach. Okay, so we are going to approach this question in two passes, a left pass and a right pass. And we'll also be maintaining a variable running product. Don't worry, you'll understand the approach in a minute. So we're going to begin with our left pass here. The first element that we're going to come across is one, right? So what we need to do is, we need to take the product of all the elements on the left side of one. As there are no elements on the left side of one, the value will be one, right? So we are going to put this value one over here. At the same time, we are going to multiply this one into running product. As we are at two now, we need to take the product of all the element on the left side of two, which will be the running product. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna take this value, put it over here, and then multiply two into running product. When we are at three, we are going to take the product of all the elements before three and put it over here. After that, we will be multiplying three into running product. Following the pattern, when we are at four, first we are gonna put the running product over here and then multiply four into running product. So that was our left pass. Now we will be beginning with our right pass. The first element that we are going to come across will be four this time. So just like we used to take the product of all the left elements in the left pass, here we will be taking the product of all the right elements in right pass. So the product of all the elements on the right side of four will be one, right? So we will be putting this running product over here and then multiplying four into running product. Following the same pattern, first we will be putting this running product over here and then multiplying three into running product. In the next iteration, we are going to put 12 over here and then multiply 2 into running product. And for the last iteration, we will be putting over 24 over here. So after we have completed the left pass and right pass, in order to get the desired output, all we need to do is multiply the elements of left pass and right pass. So at the 0th index, when we multiply 24 and 1, we will get the desired 24 value. When we multiply 12 and 1, we get 12 value. When we multiply 4 and 2, we get 8. Just like that, when we multiply 6 and 1, we get value 6. So in this approach, we are using two extra arrays for the left pass and the right pass, right? So the space complexity will be O of n. In the question, in the follow-up part, they have asked us if we can do it without using any extra space. That means the space complexity should be O of 1. Can we actually do all the computation in a single array? Let's see, the left pass is going to be the same, right? Can we do the right pass computation in the same array as well and return that same left pass array? Let's see how we do that in the coding part. All right, so in the beginning, we're gonna check for some edge cases. If nums equal equal to null or nums.length equal to equal to zero, we're gonna return an empty array of size zero. Return new end of size zero. Now let's define the resulting array, which will be of the same size of the input array. Integer array result is equal to new integer of size nums dot length. All right, now let's define our variable running product. Integer rp is equal to one. It will be one in the beginning. Now let's start our left pass. For the left pass, we'll be having our for loop integer i is equal to zero, i is lesser than nums dot length and i plus plus. So we'll be starting from our left and going to the right part. Okay, so in the beginning for the first index, we'll be directly putting the running pass as the product, right? So result of i is equal to rp. Now we'll be multiplying the value at the current index 
into the running product. So RP is equal to RP into nums of I. So this is all we need to do for the left pass. Now we will be doing the right pass. Right pass. We again need to define the RP, right? Because in the end, RP value will be different. RP is equal to one. Okay, for integer i is equal to, we will be starting from the right side this time. Nums dot length minus one, which is the last index. And we will be going till the zero th index. I minus minus. Okay, uh, just like the left pass, the result of i will be. Okay, so uh, as we will be doing everything in a single array, we need to have that value, existing value, and multiplying a new value into that existing value. So result of i into rp, not just rp, like the left pass. And after that, rp is equal to rp into nums of i. That is all you need to do in the right pass. Uh, and in the end, we will be directly returning the result array. Return result. Let's see if it runs. Okay, let's try to submit it. Great, so our solution is faster than the 100% of the solutions. All right, let's discuss the time and space complexity. For the time complexity part, we are traversing through the array twice, right? For the left pass and the right pass. So the total time complexity will be O of 2n, which is in the terms of O of n. And for the space complexity part, we did all our computation in the result array, right? and we return the same result array as well. So no extra space or no auxiliary space is used. That means the space complexity will be O of 1. So that concludes the video. Uh, thank you everyone for watching and please like, share and subscribe.